Hello people of the web and YouTube, it's Bikaira, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to mod the PS Classic. So okay, to actually mod the PS Classic, you got kind of a few options. You can either use Bleem Sync or Auto Bleem. They're two of the most popular front ends when it comes to well modding the PS Classic, and the one I'm going to be focusing on today is Auto Bleem, because it's a lot easier for beginners to get their hands on and set up. Now with that said, to actually get set up with AutoBleam, it's fairly simple. All you're going to need is a USB drive and you're going to need to format it to FAT32. As you can see, my flash drive is already formatted to FAT32 and it's already labeled as Sony. It is very important that you label the flash drive as Sony or else the PS2 won't identify it. Also, speaking of the flash drive, before I forget, some flash drives straight up don't work in the PS Classic, I've heard. However, it doesn't seem to be the case with my PS Classic, I just threw the first flash drive I found in, and it seemed like it worked pretty good for me. Anyway, once you got the flash drive all formatted and labeled, all you really gotta do is download the appropriate zip file that you want. AutoBleam comes in a few different flavors. There are minimal installs and there are the ultimate, kind of everything's included installs. And in my case, I decided to go with the ultimate install because it comes with pretty much everything that I wanted. I wanted theming, I wanted retro arch and all the cores, and I just wanted to have everything work pretty much as soon as I plugged the thing into the PlayStation. So what I did was I downloaded the ultimate retro boot zip and I extracted all the files to the root of my flash drive. As you can see, there are seven files, but I already have a eighth file here in the, the folder, and that is just some files that are made from when you plug the USB drive into the PS Classic. As you can see, I've already done this, but you will only have these few files here, but once you plug the USB drive into the PS Classic, a few new folders, so to say, will be made. But before we can plug this into the PS Classic, we got to eject the flash drive. So eject the flash drive after you put your games on, of course, because you want to have your games on when you first do this, because it will take some time to set up. And to have the games already on there that you want to play will just save you some time in the long run. So yeah, once we got the flash drive ejected, all you really got to do is plug the thing into the, P the PS Classic, pull out the power cord, put the power cord back in, and turn it on, and you're pretty much done. It will load in all your games, and that's a one-time thing. It will reload every time you add a game on, of course. So I really just recommend putting all the games you want on there once and having it load them all in in one go so you don't have to refresh the games list every time you turn the console on. But yeah, that's pretty much it. We're done. All you really need to do is just extract that zip to a flash drive, like I said, have it appropriately named, turn your PS Classic on, and it's just modded. It's as simple as that. So yeah, guys, I really hope this video was able to help you out. I know it was nothing really special. This mod was com relatively tame compared to other mods I've done in the past. But I gotta say, sometimes the simple mods are the best, and in this case, I really like how this mod was all set up and how easy it was to do. So yeah, for now, I'm going to leave today's video off here. DTPK signing off. Peace. This thing has as much power as the Pi 3 Model B, if not a little bit more. The only thing that... But in the end, once you got everything hooked up, you're pretty much good to go. The only other thing I can recommend...